All right, back again, Luke here. And today, as you can see in front of you, we have another arcade PCB. Uh, this is one of those boards that I've had for a long time. I wound up getting this with my original Blast City. If you guys have seen that video, it's quite old. But uh, I did a restoration on the Blast City uh, that I picked up for a really, really good price. I believe at that time it was maybe $50 or 5,000 yen. <laughs> Those days are long gone. But in this case here, this was one of the boards that was in the bottom of the cabinet. And it was uh, basically, it wasn't working at that time. I cleaned it up a little bit and got it to turn on. And I thought everything was great. And I stored it away to make sure there was no other damage that happened to it. And recently I've been going through some of my boards to check them and make sure everything's working okay. And when I went to go to fire this one on, it would only come up with a solid black, uh, red, green uh, screen. It wouldn't do anything. So I originally thought it was the mask ROMs here, or the EPROMs, my bad, uh, and clean those up, put them back in, still nothing. I started going over the board and noticing that there was a lot of corrosion. Now, I've since then I've taken uh, some rubbing alcohol and some Q-tips and whatnot and tried to clean up the area a bit, but there was a lot of corrosion here from leaking capacitors. And based on the capacitors that I had, I started replacing a few of them. And the ones that I've used are not the greatest in the world. And what I mean by that is uh, these are the Chang X ones. Uh, they're just ones that I had and uh, I started using a couple of those to put in place. And I did notice that the system would start to boot, but it's really random. I mean, it'll boot once every, I don't know, five or six tries, but it's not consistent. So what I thought we could do today is take a look at this board here. Uh, this one is Emeraldia, uh, like Emerald and Dia, so Emeraldia. <laughs> And uh, this board is the Namco NA2 hardware. And there are a few games that were released on this, but not so many. A lot of them are puzzle games, or uh, I think there's maybe one fighting game and whatnot. But I don't know if this is a consistent pattern, as I don't have many of these boards. Most of the other ones I have are like System 10 boards. But this one is the only one that I have that's an NA2. But I did realize that there is a lot of leakage that came around here, especially with this jumper over here. The pins were completely uh, corroded. They were green, and uh, it took a little bit of uh, pulling off to get that off of there and uh, putting it back on again. But once again, just these few capacitors that I put, there's actually another one underneath this board. Uh, I think there's one over here in the corner that I've replaced. Uh, it did help, at least it allowed it to turn on once or twice, but it's not consistent enough to where it will always turn on. So I tried to go around some of these uh, chips here as well with the legs that were looking a little bit green. But what we're going to do is we're going to try and pull off these caps here and we're going to do basically a cap kit on this board. Uh, in terms of, you know, the game and is it really worth it? Yeah, yes and no. I mean, it's better than seeing it go in the dumpster, so that's one thing. And it is a neat little puzzle game. Uh, on the other hand, this hardware here, it is a little bit tricky. There are quite a few capacitors on it. It's almost like recapping a PC Engine or something. Not, not quite as many, but you can kind of get the hint. A lot of these surface-mounted uh, caps here. So what I'm going to do is try and remove some of these. Maybe I'll show you guys a couple of techniques to remove them. And then we'll go from there and see if we can get this thing to boot properly. I'll try and turn this thing on and see if it does what I was talking about. Watch it probably prove me wrong. Well, let's see. Yeah, so this is what it's doing. I mean, it's just popping up, uh, you know, completely pink or green screen. Let's see if it'll do it again. Yeah, so it's just popping up the same screen. Before it would go black. Oh, there we go. Now we got blue. So it is only staying on one solid screen here. Red. <laughs> and after a while, I mean, like I said, after a few tries, it does sometimes turn on, which it's not going to do this time. But I'm thinking that it has something to do with these caps and, uh, yeah, the, um, corrosion around the board so what we're gonna do here is take these caps off oh, we'll try and probably take them off in sets so anything that's a 100 microfarad one we'll just kind of remove all those at one time and uh, we'll put them on one at a time I don't like to remove everything off the board at once because it can be dangerous and as you'll notice in some cases here it's kind of tricky to see if you can see the plus and minus you're okay but if you can't see the plus and minus for the positive and negative terminals it can be tricky, you might accidentally put one in backwards. But especially around like this area here, 
you can see like it, it's a little bit confusing in some areas it's not too bad on this board but uh, some boards there's no markings on there as well uh, when you do go to repair a PCB something like this when you're using uh, capacitors or replacement capacitors before you start one thing I always do and one thing I recommend doing is using your smartphone or a camera take a picture of it I mean it takes five seconds but take a shot I mean turn your camera like so take a shot make sure there's no glare try and take another shot and at least you'll be able to see where the capacitors are and what their orientation is if you don't do this you're just kinda free winging it I mean there is a slight chance you might put one in backwards and that can destroy the board so what we're gonna do here is try and remove these caps on here and put in some replacement ones like I said the ones that I have right now aren't the best but we'll get on that I'll stop rambling here and I'll see you guys in a little bit All right, so as you can see here, I've already started removing some of these caps, and I figured I'd show you guys a few different ways, or a couple different ways at least, to remove caps. And especially with surface-mounted caps, these can be a bit tricky. Uh, what you can do, there's a couple of ways that people go about doing this. Some people will do the uh, cut method, where they'll use a pair of side cutters, and they'll snip the top off of it, then remove the bottom legs or so with a soldering pen. Other people will use uh, solder on each side, side and slowly try to remove the cap that way. Other people will grab a hold of it and try and wiggle it uh, off and uh, to be honest all of these methods work. They will all work perfectly fine but you really have to be careful how you do it and how much pressure you apply, the situation of the board, the traces, etc. Uh, what I mean by that is you can see some of these are already removed. Uh, what we'll do is I've left these two here just to kind of show you a couple of different ways to go about doing this. One of these ways here, like I'd mentioned before, is just using your soldering pen and using maybe a bit of some uh, flux or a rosin core solder. You can go around the side here and oh, I always recommend using fresh solder on these if you're going to go this route. You don't want to go ahead and use just the old solder because it just doesn't stick. Don't worry if you get too much on there or you know it sticks to the other side of the shell or whatnot. You're not going to be reusing this at all. But using the old solder, this is something that someone taught me uh, you know quite a long time ago and that is using the old solder. It really just it's difficult. It's kind of like cottage cheese like it doesn't help you when you try and remove these caps and it can really hinder um, the outcome you wind up ripping up traces and stuff like that without that but here you can go ahead and uh, using for example a pair of tweezers or so you can kind of heat it up tweezers might not be the best one maybe a pair of pliers or so but you can see it's kind of wiggling here and there we go. We've got one side that's kind of popped up. And the other side, let's see if we can get something in there. Let's try and remove this side here. These kind of positions, these really make it hard um, because when you have uh, something stuck in here, uh, inside between two of these, it's really tricky to get at. Hopefully we can get this thing to heat up and remove it. can kind of feel it coming here. A little bit slowly. Okay, it's kind of coming. You really don't want to apply too much pressure, like I said, to these because it will uh, wind up ripping the trace off at the bottom. Uh, this one is really hard to get at. So, because this one is so tricky, maybe we can work it now. It's not going to work so well. We're going to try our second method here, and that is using uh, our kind of rocking method. You'll notice that uh, with these traces here, there's a pad here and there's a pad on the other side. Uh, if you rotate the cap this way or try and rock it this way, you're going to wind up lifting the pad up. It will always lift up. It'll wind up falling off and you'll have a lot of trouble. Not to say that this will happen, uh, won't happen if you do it the other way, the way that I'm suggesting here, the next one, but it makes it a little bit less risky. The other way is to go this way. So to rock it uh, uh, back and forth this way. Um, I've realized that over the you know the years of doing this that you, you have to go very slowly with it you know don't force it don't work too hard um, it will eventually break its way from the legs but it will keep the remnants of the leg on the solder pad it 
may take some time here. I can hear one popped. I think our second one here, there we go. And it's popped right off. Well, this has probably had a little bit of help from the solder and the um, soldering pen that I used before. But here we can remove our base plate here. And you can notice our trace is perfect. There is no lift up on these. And we can remove this solder bulge here. And we'll remove a little bit of solder from there, which has the extra leg on it. You can probably see that through the camera. And we'll clean this up later using some isopropyl alcohol. Uh, make sure that you use something that's not too diluted, something that does have uh, maybe 90% or 80 something percent uh, should be okay. But you can see the pad here is in uh, pretty decent condition. There's no lifting on either side. Obviously there's some residue here. You can just kind of scratch off, but that will be one way to uh, do it. Other people have tried the cut method, which is a little bit more mm, risky, I suppose. You're um, using a pair of side cutters. You can cut the cap off. Now, when you do this, you really risk a lot of things. Um, you risk electrolytic fluid being kind of dumped on the board. You also risk pulling the pad off or ripping the pads off the board by doing this too. So clippers are one thing that I don't really recommend uh, doing, but some people can get away with it. Some are really good at it, so it does work. One thing I absolutely do not recommend is uh, using a hot air station. Now, using a hot air station, you would normally use something that's, um, you know, uh, really powerful. It has a lot of heat. And when you think about these capacitors, applying a lot of heat to something like this will just cause it to pop, explode. It's dangerous. Uh, the spray of acid will go everywhere. It's not something I condone or recommend at all. So try to avoid that one as much as possible. I mean, don't even kind of consider it. It's much easier to try and go with a regular soldering pen or, uh, you know, something similar to that. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to try and remove the rest of these caps and I'll get on that and then we'll come back and I'll catch you guys in a little bit. All right, so as you can see here, I've gone through and I've replaced all of the caps. I figured I'd do this off screen because there are just so many of them and it took such a long time to get to each and every one of those that, uh, yeah, I just didn't want to spend a lot of time <laughs> recording that. But as you can see here, there were a total of 25 different caps on here and a lot of that electrolytic fluid had spilled over onto a lot of these uh, surface mount components like the RAM or uh, for, where is it? Uh, there was more RAM over here that it actually spilled on. And um, this small chip over here, this small IC, I don't know what it is used for or what the purpose of it is, but it does have a cap tied to it. And around this area too, there was a lot of corrosion. And uh, I don't know if that also had something to do with this thing not starting or what. To be honest, I really don't know a whole lot about this uh, particular board here, what makes it run or what makes it uh, shut down, but it seems like there's a lot of caps here tied to different components. Maybe it's part of a security measure, I'm not sure. But all of these have been kind of replaced here. I still have some, uh, was it flux and stuff to clean off of it, but I figured we could pop the top board on here, the ROM board back on and give this a shot as soon as I find that. Okay, there's our ROM board. So we'll try and plug this in. I haven't had a chance to test this yet. I just got done with it and figured we could go ahead and try this out. Uh, I just realized there was another cap up here that I probably should replace at some point in time. Luckily, it's kind of easy to get to. But go ahead and clip that on there and put our harness on here and kind of hope for the best. I don't know if this thing's going to do anything different, but let's go ahead and take a look at our monitor here. See if we get anything new. Well, it looks like it's kind of a blue-green color now. I don't know what that's all about. Oh, wow, there we go. Okay, self-test, everything good. I don't know what that self-test was, but uh, kind of popped up there. This looks a little bit funky. I can't remember if this is the way it normally looked when it was coming on screen or not. But as you can see, it is booting. The question is, was that just a fluke or 
is that going to be continuous here? Let's see. Let's try and turn this off and see what happens. Oh, well, it came on a second time. Much better than what it was doing before. I can't see. This is actually, it's flashing really fast, so I can't tell exactly what RAM checked it went through. I could see pallet RAM, and uh, that was about it. It was just really, really fast. But at least the title screen is popping up here. Let's see if we can get it to... Oh, well, it's got sound now, too. Before, the sound level was super low, so it wasn't putting out any sound before when it would fire on. Let's go ahead and... Okay. Yeah, this seems like it's, uh... ten times better, at least with the sound going. So, like I said, it's kind of like a, you know, a puzzle game, Tetris game here. But it already sounds like it has way more music. Yeah, it definitely has way more music than it had before, too. Um, so, I don't know if this is... Maybe it just needed to charge those caps for a couple seconds before it would fire on because they're all new. I don't know. Let's try this one more time. Let's turn this off and see if it does it again. Oh, well, there we go. Maybe that's all I needed to do. Yeah, it looks like there's a shape palette and VRAM, which is our video RAM. So it looks like that's what it was. Um, all of those capacitors there were causing this thing not to boot, especially when you could see there, just when we flipped it on the first time, uh, it didn't want to pop on at all. But maybe once those ch caps wound up getting a charge to them, it... Uh, it kind of brought this thing back to life. Uh, if that's the case, I'm not really sure here. I'd recommend anybody who has this system hardware here, like I said, this is a Namco NA2 hardware. Anybody who has this board, definitely go ahead and replace those caps on this board as soon as possible. I would also recommend going ahead and uh, scrubbing up the board as much as you can to try and remove any corrosion that may be on it. I know that uh, a lot of that fluid had leaked around to different parts, even underneath these, uh, these are the volume knobs, so let's see here, I think this is speaker volume. Yeah, so speaker volume is working here for that, but there was a lot of corrosion behind that as well. Um, yeah, that also seems to be adjusting it somewhat, so yeah, I, I would definitely recommend go ahead and replacing that, but at least the board is kind of showing some consistency as far as coming back to life and uh, turning on each time, except for that first power-up. But nonetheless, just want to share with you guys a little bit of a look at this repair here. And uh, yeah, hopefully if you have anything similar to this, you can get on that and try and get it fixed up before it winds up uh, dying off here. But that's about all for me for right now. Like always, I'll put up another video here soon. So thanks for watching. Watching some Emeraldia. It seems to be working quite well. Let's see. Yeah, much, much better here. Sounds great. Looks good. Well, yeah, guys. Uh, thanks for sticking on here, and glad to see another board here saved from the grave. different uh, ways of playing here, damage meters, and showing how much twice the damage. Or... Yeah, not really a playthrough video here, but just to show at least this thing is going again. <laughs> but take care guys, uh, we'll see you again here soon.